Hi everybody, Renegade here with some more, uh, Go, another Go review. This game, uh, <laughs> I did another written review in OGS and I had a lot to say, partially because I felt like my opponent was making a lot of mistakes. I definitely made mistakes too, but, uh, so let's start from the top. Uh, I think I made a mistake with my very first move. Um, I think if you're going to take a 3-4 point as, uh, white... Um, as your opening move, uh, it should be either, uh, like over here or, or, you know, wherever. Um, it's bad to do it where I did it because black, I'm giving black the ability to play, you know, whatever here. If black plays this here, not only is he building something pretty good here, but if I make, if I take the fourth corner, however I take it, I don't like four fours, but whatever, uh, I'm giving black the ability to play here and this diminishes uh, my corner while also giving him quite a bit of influence. Um, and so, like, as white, if I want to play a 3-4, I should start with one of the other corners. This allows for a cross Hoshi game, and I guess mentally I'm just in the mood of, I don't want cross Hoshi, I like building. Um, but uh, it's, like, bad. And cross Hoshi is generally better for white, anyways, because um, white gets Comey, white gets more points, and if you're ha playing a cross Hoshi game, there's generally less points given, so cross Hoshi is better for white. So if I play, you know, something like this or whatever, and then black says, ha ha, um, like, and then I do whatever I do, uh, take the fourth corner, even if black comes in and takes this, like, I already have, uh, like, black is more disconnected than in the other version, which is better for white if I wanted to start with a 3-4. So there's that. Um, then, after black, black take, this is a mistake, I actually didn't write it down, but yeah, no, I did write it down, for some reason, I didn't see a big long thing of text, this has a bunch of text, this doesn't, so I'm like, oh, I didn't write anything there, no, I did, yeah, <laughs> that's a mistake, wrong corner, um, so I immediately approached, because I just don't like this big formation, yeah, white has more potential on the left side and the bottom side, so if you want to play a 3-4, it should be facing the other way. Basically, what I mean here is that um, this stone is already, like, there's already a black stone on the other side of it, whereas this stone, there is no black stone near it. So uh, he's incentivizing me by taking a 3-4 to go here, um, which means now I'm getting this as potential, as opposed to if black did this as a 3-4 and I decided to go here, my potential here is smaller because he's got a black stone on the other side already. So... That is why the move here would be a mistake, I'd say. So I, you know, come do it again. Uh, yeah, this is a big mistake. Um, I mean, it's not like, you know, black can still come back for this for sure. But like, this is a pretty big, uh, what's the term? Fundamental mistake. It's a big fundamental mistake. That's the way to put it. Because you're letting white build on the fourth line for no good reason. Normally, you know, if white, you know, has a 3-4 stone, you approach in such a way like this. Or maybe if you're scared of this white stone like this to um, force white to live law low on the third line. Uh, if you come here, you're just letting white make fourth line territory. And that's, you know, you're letting him make fourth line territory with his 3-4 opening stone. There's no reason to allow that, really. Um, the only reason to maybe do that is if black is trying to make something with this. But, like, black is too close. There's plenty of room to jump in here. A 3-3 invasion is possible. So it's just not a good move. Uh, and yeah, knight's moves are good for movement, but bad for strengthening. Yeah, this move is pretty bad. Maybe the idea is, oh, I can, like, make a move around here, and then I'm all connected, but that's too slow. It still allows for a 3-3 invasion. If he doesn't make a move over here, I can jump in here. And even if he does, this stone is pretty weak, and I can attack it. Um, what, really what he should be doing right now is strengthening his black stone, his lone black stone, because that gives him potential to build something big here, and also it puts pressure on my corner, like I'd want to respond somehow. Or he could pincer over here or something, maybe, maybe. Um, but by going this far away, there's really no pressure on these two white stones. Uh, I could continue to further pressure with a move like this. That's certainly possible and just put more pressure on these stones to like, you know, live anyways or whatever and then take something huge, you know, threaten something big like this. And that's, you know, maybe better than what I did. I think there's arguments both ways. But the point is this move is bad because it doesn't really protect this and you would have to protect it anyways. And it doesn't build anything here. Um, so, it's not Sente, another thing. So, I can go do whatever I want now. Uh, and I decide to come here. I think this move is fine. It puts pressure on this stone. Let's maybe build something here, which puts pressure on this stone. 
Uh, black comes down. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is a very good follow-up here. I should either make my white stones stronger or attack those black stones more severely. This move is kind of trying to do both, but it's not really doing either very well. Yeah. Um, this, th like, if I want a pincer, I should just straight up do something like this and actually pincer. Uh, but if I want to strengthen my stones, uh, you know, a move like, uh, like, coming down is probably a bit slow. But, you know, even just a, a jump over, maybe. Or a pincer, you know, wh whichever. You know, strengthen the position of these stones or attack these stones. The move I made, it's iffy because, cause like, he can still run out here and has plenty of life. And, like, I might make a big wall here, but he has plenty of room to undercut the wall. So it's, 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 I don't think it's the best. I think it's trying too hard to do both things. But, uh, yeah, bad Tanuki, your corner on the right is weak. Yeah, he should definitely respond in his corner. He shouldn't ignore, like, uh. I think this um, bad move is, like, this is a bad move in my opinion, but he needs to respond to it. Um, it becomes kind of a good move when he doesn't respond. His corner's in a lot of danger. Now, arguably, this move is close enough that maybe it's sort of a response, but I don't think so. This corner, you really want to protect your corner here, I'd say. Um, yeah, so I went ahead and split. Uh, he tries to, you know, link up. Makes sense, because I'm making this corner weak now. And then he goes here. But this move helps your uh, weak corner on the right. He's behind a weak corner on the left. Ideally, you should end this exchange with Sente to defend your other corner as well. Yeah. Because uh, there is a threat here. Black can certainly threaten to link up, which does help these stones. This this is, like, finally coming back and helping these stones. But now this stone is really weak when he did this move. So he needs to be careful to keep Sente. Because I should respond and, you know, make sure these stones are okay. Um, you know, threaten these stones a little bit. He pulls back. I pull back. And then he goes here, and that's not Sente, uh, just frankly speaking. Like, of course he wants to come back. He doesn't want to get cut apart. He wants to put pressure here. And then I have to respond here, otherwise he can, like, eat this stone. Uh, but once he does this, there's just no Sente here. Um, now, does that mean he should have come back immediately? Is there a way for me to punish this group? Probably, but, like, his corner is in danger of fully dying, really. Um, uh, as far as a Sente move goes, like, maybe even something like this. Try to jump out which puts pressure on this stone, maybe makes me uh, back off, and these stones get a little pressured, maybe. I'd probably try to lean on his stones here or something, but regardless, uh, this move is is not doing enough. It's not Sente. So I can come down here and attack the corner now. Uh, he runs down. I run down with him. I don't think this is wrong. Uh-huh. This is a mistake, though. Um, this corner really should either have died or become a Seki, I would say, uh, based on the way I was playing. I think he could have made it a Seki, but this um, this is not the right move. I need to play e3 at your four to keep the pressure up on the corner. This is being overly safe. My thought in the game was, well, if I go here and he goes here and I protect, he can cut, and that's a bad cut. And that is a bad cut. So I just protect that cut. And, like, I wasn't even thinking about the fact that if he cuts here, I don't care. This is fine. He can come down here. I have plenty of room. Um, so I just needed to not care about that cut and just realize I could protect this cut. And this cut is, like, doesn't matter as much. Um, alternatively, I could go here. This can become a little awkwarder. It can become awkwarder, but um, this is more threatening to fully kill him, whereas the other one, he was just going to live small. Here, it becomes a bit of a fight. I haven't read all this out, or I think I did read it out, but it's it, it was, like, yesterday when I did that, and I kind of forget. But the point is, it works out kind of okay for white. It's dangerous, but I should be able to kill this group. Um... So, uh, or he might be able to make some profit. He might be able to come back and kill these stones, expand this territory. This is a big fighting move. This is the keep him small and contained. He should live. This is the maybe I kill him. It becomes kind of gross, but I think I'm okay. This is just too safe. It's too safe. Uh, mistake. Solidly coming down in G2 puts pressure on both black groups instead of just the corner group. Yeah. What I wasn't realizing with this move, my plan with this move is, oh, I'm going to come down. I'll keep them from connecting. And then, you know, I got pressure on, I got extra pressure on his corner, so he has to fight to live. What I wasn't thinking about was the fact that this move really threatens the underneath connection still. And so it puts me in an awkward spot, right? Because, uh, like, if, if, if I realize that, I, 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 you know, I should have just come down here. Because it makes it easier for him to live here. But then if he does, I can monkey jump at any time to uh, kill any base this might have which means that coming over top is really lethal for this group. So, and he still has to work a little bit more to make this alive. 
Um, the other approach, which actually I'm thinking of just now, is, uh, you know, after he does this and he connects, if I come down and he tries to do this, uh, I can make this move. I'm seeing this just now as I'm talking about this. If he takes, uh, I can come up here. And he comes up here, and he comes up here, and he comes up here. And I don't know exactly if this works or not. He might try to cut me off. Um, it becomes a bit of a fight. If I cut, um, he might try to connect. I'll go up here. I might be dead. I haven't read all this out, but the point is that's the other idea. I would need to read it out first. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, oh, so what I did, uh, coming back and protecting like this, if I was planning to do this, I shouldn't have done this in the first place. I think the idea is if I'm going to do this, my thought should be that I attack this stone if he tries to live in the corner by attacking this stone. And if that doesn't work, then I shouldn't play this move. I should just play this move. I do take the free Atari. Um, and then I do this and that puts some pressure here, but it's like taking two stones to put pressure on both groups and not enough when I could have just done that with one stone decently. Well, it's, it's sort of a wasted stone. It's not completely wasted, half wasted. Um, but yeah, he should definitely not be protecting this stone. He should essentially, in my opinion, kind of give up this stone now. Cause if he, he protects his corner or does whatever he's going to do here. Um, and I, uh, just try to take this stone. Uh, I mean, it comes out and I protect. Um, like, now this becomes really awkward for him, and maybe I can eat these stones. But I feel like he just needs to give these up. Uh, I feel like he really needs to give up this stone. He should be protecting his corner, because it's probably close to dead here. And in fact, the fact that I didn't kill it was lucky on his end. So he protects this, and then I come in here. And uh, this is a mistake. The Hane at A2 leads to Aseki. This is just leads to death. Yeah. I read a lot of this out and found ways that maybe Black could live here. And yeah, this is this this dies. There's there's nothing. If Because uh, if I play here, Black has no way to live. Um, Black can try to take this a free Atari. And I have to connect because Black will get an eye. And then, like, there's no room here. Because this will never be an eye. Because I can falsify this at any time. But then otherwise, uh, there's like, this is one eye. Like, black can maybe try to... No, that's not even an eye. There's just no eyes. Um, and if black tries this, I don't care. I do this. He can take it. It's a false eye. Uh, there's just no room for eyes here. So what I did um, in the actual game was I played down here. And to be fair, my thinking isn't entirely wrong because this stone... The problem is that this stone was in danger. If this stone was not in danger and black tried to do this, then this would kill. Because if black takes, uh, how does this work again? If black takes, I uh, come over here or something like that. I haven't read all this out. The point is this normally would kill, um, but it doesn't kill because I have to protect this stone. Uh, and so, yeah, because I don't have a stone over here or something keeping this protected, when black does this, if I pull back, I'm giving him the chance to make the life move because this is a life move. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just have to not give him that chance. Uh, so he's going to have to take, and then I do this, I think, and then he comes over here and I do this. It's something like this, or this is a Seki, actually. This became a Seki. There's some way to kill it. I forget. It might actually just be coming in down here. That sounds correct. Yeah, that looks dead. And then, right, that's right. And then if he comes over here, I come here. And if he takes me, I falsify the eye. Yeah. So... Uh, normally this would be a kill move, but in this circumstance, uh, it was not because I did not have that stone there. And so, um, I was forced to protect, uh, and so I couldn't make the kill move because if black comes here and I do this, um, uh, yeah, black's alive. And if I don't do that and I just try to jump in, you know, black's alive anyways. So, so yeah, I needed to play a two and I didn't. And what I was saying the other way, I was saying that uh, Black's group is really small here. Um, I think I probably could have killed it if I had not played this safe move. I haven't read all it out, but I think I probably could have killed it if I didn't play the safety move. But because I played the safety move, um, and because he wasted a move over here, that's the real, the real thing that killed this group, is that he wasted a safety move over here. Um, uh, if he does this, it's a Seki. Um, and I, I, I read this out yesterday. I don't feel like... Mm, Thinking about all the variations, but if I play correctly here, black gets seckied. Um, I think it starts with a move over here. I think you have to start over here because if you don't, black ends up um, 
uh, like black takes and you extend down and black extends out and you can't let black get out because then yeah, so he'll do that and then black will do this and then he's definitely alive so you have to start with a move over here and then black doesn't want to get cut off I think so he connects or something like that anyways it turns into this big sequence and then it ends up being a seki I don't want to play all of it out but I thought about it uh, just this should turn into a seki if you're watching this and you're better than me and you're like nah -uh, black can live there just solidly it, even if white plays optimally tell me how because I didn't see it mm. Uh, yeah, so if white plays optimally, this should be a Seki. Uh, and it starts with this move, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, um, black went down and that's wrong because this leads to death if I play correctly, but I played wrong. So I gave him a chance to live. This isn't that bad because he still has to live in Gote and I get to make a big move and I can attack these stones now still, the stones he was trying to save. Um, he goes up. That lets me undercut him. I extend. Uh, he protects. I go up. Uh, yeah, mistake. The wedge at 4 lets you connect to the corner. Now white can protect against that, making both groups weak. Yeah, so black shouldn't have played this because black had a way to uh, connect to the corner at any time if he wanted. It's something I didn't really see in the game, but looking at it through the review, I'm like, oh yeah, that's there. I mean, he doesn't necessarily need to connect yet, but uh, he can if he wants to. And the way he would do it is he does this move. Uh, I can't really send him up because um, these stones are in too much danger now. So I have to send them down. These stones are still in danger, so I need to connect. And then he can go here, and he's threatening to cut off this stone. I can save the stone, but then he connects underneath. Now he's connected, and he's all basically fine. Um, he connects in Gote, as far as I can tell. There might be a Sente way to play that for black. I'm not sure. But as far as I can tell, he connects in Gote, so it's fine for me. However, when he does this move, he's disconnecting himself. Because, of course, I'm going to play here which is going to strengthen my group, and it's going to put this stone in danger, so he still wants to respond over here, and now this connection's impossible, because I don't need to protect this anymore. I can send him upwards now. Um, and, like, I'll just run up with him, and these stones are going to get cut off. This stone's probably going to get cut off. So, the connection is now gone. So he goes up, of course. I go up one more. He goes up on the other side. I do the Hane. He does the Hane back. I go up. And yeah, bad Tanuki. Your black group is still in some danger, plus this gives white a uh, great excuse to make a large extension from their wall since it also pincers your stone, and your stone is not putting enough pressure on the corner that white needs to be concerned. Yeah, so this is a bad move for a lot of reasons. Number one, this group is like, it's got probably an eye down here and maybe an eye here, but maybe not. It's like really close to being boxed in completely, and it gives me a great excuse. Like, I could defend over here and push you back a little bit, but... Uh, so like these stones, they've got enough room. These stones are like, you know, not solidly connected so I can lean on them to make life shape if he does kind of try to try, try to jump in there. But, uh, yeah, so I just pincer him, essentially trying to claim all this as my own. Black's best move here is to be, is to realize, okay, these stones are kind of undefended and come in here and he doesn't, he goes over here. You should be pr uh, pressuring white's corner at this point. Plus it's a really early invasion. Invading early is usually to, uh, the invader, in, invader's detriment. Yeah. So. The problem here is that this is essentially an invasion. That's what this is. When you make a move like this, you have to think of this as an invasion. And you really shouldn't make an invasion until it's pretty clear where all the big territory is. And, like, your corner over here is still in some danger. If you give it more life, then you can maybe, you know, do more things. This corner maybe needs more life. You can also maybe make a big side here. Black can make a big side here. Black can threaten this white group. Black can make a big side here. This is very early to make an invasion like this. Um, and especially when you make an invasion, uh, your group, whatever you're invading with, is probably going to live small. Uh, but you're going to give So you're giving uh, the enemy a chance to make a lot of potential. And that potential will hurt any weak groups you have elsewhere on the board. And Black's got a weak group here. Black's got a weak group here. Um, and if I 3-3 invade, then this, you know, there's stuff here too. So just cutting this off makes sense to me. Because now this can potentially become weak if I make this stronger. And this is still kind of shaky. Black comes out. Um, uh, which I think there is some logic to this move. Like it makes sense. Now that he's committed to this move. I think this was bad in the first place. But now that he's committed to this move. There's some sense in like trying to come over top of here. But I want to protect the... Um, I want to protect the fact that I can bully this group. Um, and if I try to protect that too much, Black can maybe... Uh, uh, I don't know what my thinking was exactly, but basically this might turn into a big fight. Um, 
like black could maybe push me this way. Is that the idea? Something like that. Uh, like if white tries to wedge, connect, there's a cut, and then these stones are in danger. I definitely looked at this move, this cutting him off move, but these white stones are, I think, a little too cramped to do that. Uh, that's why I decided that this move, just coming out, is probably better. Um, oh. Because the threat here with coming out is that I want to take all of this as white. Whereas if I'd come here, I'd be saying, I want to take this while these stones are kind of cramped. So this is uh, more better because it also puts pressure over here if he decides to defend here. Uh, he decides to make a small life here. Uh, I come here because I feel like these stones are now all very separated. Uh, he comes over there. I come down. He goes down. I go there. He goes there. He's threatening to make life. I think so far I haven't really made any mistakes because I'm basically saying, okay, these stones are mine. Um, I prevent him from going further in. Yeah, he makes a move that's kind of a life move. I prevent him from linking up. Uh, he makes sure his eye can't be falsified. And now here I make a mistake. A7 kills. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure. I, it's hard for me to figure out if Black could have made a living group here or not. So I didn't write any of his moves here necessarily down as mistakes. I think this is probably generally a mistake because his stone here is already pretty far. He should maybe try to jump out more. I'm not sure exactly. But um, yeah, when I jump in here, he's got like too many cuts. This might be a mistake. If he doesn't do that and instead goes like over here, maybe he can make an actual living group. I'm bad at living in tight spaces, so I'm not really the person to ask about advice for this. But um, once we get to this point, This kills him. Now, I'll say that under normal circumstances, a shape like this would live. And that's what I was reading out is, oh, this looks alive. Now, black can't do this because I'll do this, black will take, and the eye will be false, right? Normally, though, in a circumstance like this, you just run out the stone. Uh, if black turns here, he's alive, so I have to go with him. Now, black can't do this because I'll do this, black will take, and I still falsify the eye. So what black needs is to be able to go three spaces. And black cannot go three spaces. Um, because if black goes here, I am now connected. Black cannot play here. Black can play here, and like, I'll connect. And black is dead. And that's what I was sort of failing to see. I was reading that wrong. As I was reading it, I was reading it like, um, oh, he's ahead of me. So I'll get here, and he can just like play here, but he can't play there. And I didn't realize that. And so that group was dead. Oh. This black group was dead and I didn't kill it. Normally this would live because if black could play here, if black could play here, it can't. But if black could play here, um, well, you saw that when black does this and takes, um, like he's falsified. But if there was one more space, if there was one more space along this line, he'd still have an eye. I don't know if you can like visualize that, but it would work. He didn't have the three spaces, so he should have been dead. Instead, I just let him live small, like a dingus, failing to kill. Um, I, yeah, I think this is fine. Come all the way down. Strengthen these stones. He has to play here. I false the eye. Uh, and then I come back to attacking this group. I think that's fine, because it potentially, you know, makes all this into territory. If this becomes too weak to jump out, these are probably dead. Bad Tanuki, your group is close to being boxed in, plus your bottom right corner is still weak, and this gives White an excuse to make it weaker. Mm -hmm. Bad, bad, bad. Uh, big mistake. The 3-3 invasion is still possible, so very little territory has actually been secured with this move, and now your bottom right corner might be dead. Mm. Ah, I had a typo there. I said might dead. <laughs> yep, it's might dead. Um, mistake. This is giving Black plenty of room to run. I said might be dead because I didn't really read it all out, but... The correct move would have been something um, around here. Here, or here, or here, you know, like I, something around here. Black essentially has to run in this direction. Um, and does he live? I don't know. I'm, I'm bad at this. I'm, I don't want to spend too much time thinking about it. Point is uh, that coming down here is wrong. And there's a reason that coming down here is wrong. And the reason is that he can respond here immediately and threaten to make an eye, so I have to protect, so he's got room, so he can run, and now he's got a decent share of the corner, and he's almost certainly going to live. This might not be the optimal move. It might even be something like down here. But uh, regardless, with this move, he's got, you know, he's got plenty of room. And that's the reason that this move is a mistake, this whitestone here, because it's like a goatee threat. 
Um, however, that's only if he protects. And he didn't. He came up here. You should haunt it at S2 as White would have to fix a Q2. Nair corner is almost surely dead. But I played it wrong. Again, I keep having these chances to kill, and I keep, like, I could have killed here by playing here, and I didn't. I could have killed here by playing here, and I didn't. I could have killed here by playing here. This this should kill, because, like, Black doesn't really have room now. The uh, I think part of what I was fearing was that Black would link up with these stones, maybe cut this stone off. And, you know, I think that's genuine. But I was reading it out, and it's, it's like, not bad. Um, like, if Black tries to do this, do this, and then push, um... Like, uh, I would do something like this. He does this. I'd connect. He might come over top. I would extend. What's he going to do? Block me? I can do this. Do this. Do this. Extend. Extend. Is he going to try to come down still? I can... Uh, can I extend further? No, I have to, like, connect. And then he blocks me. I don't know. The point is that there, I have a lot of wiggle room. Um, there's, there's a lot of wiggle room here with that cut. And so... Oh, I think another thing I can do also with that cut is that when he blocks me, I can, like, uh, cut over here. There's, 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 there's things I can do. There's, that's probably wrong, looking at that again. But um, uh, I have a lot of wiggle room. I can probably attack these stones. Um, something like this, even. And he has to try to make a life move. The point is, I was scared of that cut, but based on what I've read out, uh, the cut is not... I mean, it's dangerous... But I think I should kill him as long as I play well. Still, I think there's some merit um, in defending here. Black didn't defend, so I should take the corner with S3. The cut looks iffy, but it's actually not that bad. Yeah. And also, um, even if he does come over here and lives, maybe that's okay. Because, like, even if he comes over here, I can, like, be like, make a move like this and say, do you want to connect? Okay. Um, and then come over here and be like, are you going to come through? Okay. Um, and I'm connected here. You can try to push me out. This stone is cut off. You can try to do this. But then there's like uh, this situation. Um, and then oh, what does he do? There's like, you know, these stones can link up over here maybe. These stones look like they're probably dead. But the, the point is... I don't know. There's a lot of... Uh, I can't read all that fast. The point is that taking the corner is big even if this group lives, but it probably dies. So, <clears throat> he does that. He comes down. Still not defending here. Mistake. I've already protected the cut, so I should definitely play as three. Black can form a monkey jump connection. Black will still lose most of the corner and give me a bunch of influence. Yeah. So, here, it's actually better um, for me, instead of doing this, to do this. It's actually harder for white to get out and live when he does it this way. Um, anyways, uh, the point is, it's harder for black to get out like this. Uh, so it was better for me to do that move here. However, once I've played my safety stone, it actually becomes worse for me to do this, because black now has a monkey jump, and he can connect these, these stones to these stones with the monkey jump. It works. I've read it out. Um, however, uh, so there's something like he, he has to give up these two stones, I believe. Um, uh, because if he tries to connect back, I haven't read all this. I, I mean, I did read all this out, and that's why I know this, but I forget exactly how it works. If he connects here, I can, like, kill him somehow. I don't remember exactly. But the point is that he needs to give up these stones and just start connecting his monkey jump or whatever. And I take these stones. Um... I read that out yesterday. Maybe I'm forgetting something. But the point is that it's uh, it's still bad to do this because I basically guarantee these two stones. And if he tries to um, save them, he's going to, like, lose all of it. Uh, I have all the variations down here, but I don't want to go out of my way to look at them right now. So, uh, I block. Uh, Black comes down here, finally taking a share of the corner. Black comes down, I threaten, mistake, you should pull back to S5. Black ends up living anyways, but yeah, Black should have pulled back. Um, because he's got two stones with two spaces. And my threat, when, you know, when he does this, if he tries to take, um, there's still two open liberties. And so if he fills, essentially the idea would be I, he fills, he can run, but then, like, I would connect is probably my play here. I connect, if he tries to cut me, 
I'm killing these two stones. These stones like might live if they really run, but these are all dead. So, um, he so he correctly, uh, nope, he correctly you know ignores that and makes his living move. But uh, yeah, this group could have maybe died if I had just take take the corner in the first place, or just taken more of this so that he you know before coming down to the corner in the first place. So just you know better better at killing killing got to increase my killing tactics. I ended up winning this game by a decent amount, but like this is three groups now that might have died if I had just played a little better. Um. Mm hmm. Mistake, K2 gives black an easy second eye, better to play L2 and take more of the bottom, letting black live small. Yeah, so, obviously, like, my thinking is, oh, he has to work to live, but he doesn't really, because obviously that would be an eye, so I have to play here, and then he gets a lot of, you know, he's got a pretty easy eye there. So, uh, what I should have done is play uh, uh, here, because now black is being threatened. If he makes the small life here, and I extend, you know, I don't know if this is even correct at this point, but if I extend, he gets basically none of this, whereas he got a lot before. It might not even be correct to do this because it might not be sent A. I might just want to play elsewhere at this point. But the point is I get more of the corner. Um, uh, if black decides, oh, I'm going to be fancy, uh, like, does black have an eye? Can he make an eye with one move here? Because if he doesn't, if he doesn't make a good threat here, I kill him. Um, and even if he makes life here, he's still really small. He's smaller than he was in the other version, so. And if I realize he's basically going to live regardless, I shouldn't bother playing the kill move. Especially if it's going to be easy for him to live, so. Yeah, and this is an easy live move, so. Mistake, Black's alive, and I have no major weaknesses to Nuki. Yeah, um, boxing men like this isn't very important. Uh, these are fairly strong. So this isn't really that big. I should Tanuki already. Black should also Tanuki already. Although I can forgive Black a little bit for this because this does look um, like if he Tanukis, this looks a little precarious, but uh, but it's fine. He can do this, but I can't play here, so he makes the eye real. Um, yeah, and if I like come in here, he just has to come down. And then the eye is real. So there's no way for me to kill him uh, at this point. So he should be playing away. This isn't big enough. Again, this is not big enough. I should be playing away. I was a little worried about this stone, but this stone is protected on both sides already. So there's no point. Uh, and yeah, this is also a mistake. Um, it's an even bigger mistake because I can I could have played this in Sente. I didn't, but I could have. And then Black has to do this. Um, because if he doesn't... And I do this, like, if he comes here, I take him. And if he comes here, I take him. And if he does nothing, then I can do this. He takes, and I have a snapback. And so, I had a sente follow-up here, so we definitely needed, needed to not play this and just play away. So I got the Tanuki. <clears throat> Always read before leaving an elephant's eye. Yeah, I didn't I didn't call this a mistake in my comments because I think this actually works out fine. But, like, this is something I do instinctively. It's like, oh, one space jump, another one space jump. No, there's an elephant's eye. you got to read this out. And I think it's fine. I think this all works fine and dandy. But i got to read this kind of stuff out because uh, I didn't realize in the moment I was making an elephant's eye and I need to realize that stuff. Uh, yeah, this elephant's eye is obviously bad, though. The one I made is maybe fine. Uh, but this one's really bad. Because if black tries to connect here, I'm threatening this, and this is probably dead. So, of course, he does the correct thing and plays here, but that just means this stone is dead. So he made a really bad elephant's eye. Another bad elephant's eye, yeah, because I can just come in here. Um, if he's trying to turn this into territory, this is, like, a little weak. I have, a, I have a, like, an undershot at these stones, so he should really be... Um, Playing something closer to this if he's trying to secure territory. This can be cut, yep, and I do cut it. This is either Gote or lets me get a monkey jump. Black should be claiming more at the top. Yeah, this is too small. Black should be like trying to block me off here or playing a stone here 
so I can't jump in because there's still room to jump in. I'm not the type to jump in like this, to be honest. I don't like trying to have to live small, but um, it's still a move people in general will make, and securing this territory is, like, bigger than uh, just coming down. Because even though I, I should respect this because I do have a weakness and come down as well, like, does Black want to come down again? Because if not, um, like, Black's leaving a monkey jump for later. So, like, if Black was not leaving a monkey jump, then sure, this is fine, because it is a sente move, but there's that monkey jump, and you don't want to deal with that monkey jump, probably. So, like, play elsewhere in the first place, I'd say. Uh, you don't need to play there unless White plays P1. Yeah, I already talked about this, but... Uh, Black doesn't need to play that, because um, if I play here now, if Black does whatever he's going to do, prevent the monkey jump, let's say, and then I play in here. He can't play here because I'll take. That's true. But he can play here, and I can't take here. I can threaten it, but he'll take first, and then he's alive. So this was an unnecessary move. And the wasted moves are bad. Uh, I come in a little bit because um, I just like coming in. I realized I was winning, so I just wanted to reduce. Really, if I thought I was behind, a bigger move is certainly to come in here or just the 3-3 invasion, which is still possible at this point. He blocks. I come over here. He defends. I connect. Uh, another elephant's eye. Yep, he's got like two elephant's eyes into this territory, so. The 3-3 invasion is preferable to this. Yeah, I didn't call this a mistake because I'm not really comfortable living small. In general, I don't like living that small unless I feel pressured. So uh, that's why I didn't call this a mistake. But it's definitely true that coming in like this, you're probably alive here. And um, when you come in like this, this is when he gets a chance to fully defend against this. Because now the 3-3 invasion is very awkward if it works at all. And the 3-3 invasion would give me more than what little I'm getting by like poking over here. So that's why this is kind of a mistake, but I was already winning, so... The wedge looks good here. Yeah, again, I didn't call this a mistake because I didn't fu fully read it out. This is a pretty good wedge. If he plays here, he pulls back, and he defends. I'm in, and that's pretty good. And I was trying to get in here for a while, so... Um, and then uh, if he protects here, uh, I can go here, and he can, like, you know, he can try to cut me off or something. If he pulls back, I might even be able to live in the corner... Um, I can play funky moves like this, and then, like, let's cut this apart, um, uh, or if he, uh, does try to, like, Atari me, I can, like, reverse Atari, uh, if he extends, I can do something like this, he can take, I can threaten, he can maybe connect, get in here, he blocks, there's maybe something to cuts here, I haven't read all this out, but like, okay, he's gonna connect, uh, this is probably dead, because I'm bad at these small life shapes, um, but whatever, point is, um, that wedge, there's a lot of variations that would have, you know, relied on a moment-to-moment -moment reading to me, but the wedge in general looks good here, I didn't want to call it a mistake, because, um, it's kind of, it's, it's dangerous, but the wedge looks good to me. He can also just send me down, but to me that's a big mistake because um, that's a really big mistake. This is just a ladder and it's dead. Uh, sending me down is definitely wrong, and if he tries to like come over here, then yeah, something like that. So I think the wedge there is pretty good, and I should have you know maybe considered it. I just uh, yeah. And this move is, um, it's okay. This is a bit slow because he's obviously going to block here. He didn't, but he's obviously going to block here. I have some elephant eye connections I can peek at, so I think it's fine if I let him have this. But uh, this is a bit slow, given that he's pro I didn't actually write it down as a bit slow. Um, but it's kind of like the idea is if I was going to do more invasive stuff, I should have like wedged and stuff or done the 3-3 invasion because he's obviously going to block here. I can maybe do some shenanigans down here. Uh, maybe. I don't know if I can get away with that or not, but um, maybe yeah, that would have been a follow-up if he had done the normal block. But he did not do the normal block. He did a really stupid move. The 3-3 invasion is already impossible. Blocking at R15 is ideal. Because, like, yeah, coming down here, that's huge. This, like, splits these groups. This forces this group to live on its own. It eats so much into his territory. Um, this is, like, that's very unnecessary safety stone. Really bad. Really bad move. 
He's got a play move over there to live now. I can just I can just casually threaten him, come down, he blocks, and then I finally take advantage of the elephant's eye. Come in here, he blocks, come in here. He, elf, he blocks his elephant's eye, lets me come further in. Uh, I set up for a cut here. Uh, another elephant's eye I need to read before I leave these. Yeah, I left another elephant's eye here. It's like a double elephant's eye. Again, I from what I've read out now, this looks like it works fine. But I like I don't really realize I'm leaving them when I'm leaving them. And I need to realize that these are elephant's eyes if I'm going to play them. Because elephant's eyes are generally bad. Oh. And uh, black came down here. I blocked. He extended. I blocked. And then he come into my, came into my elephant's eye. Big mistake. There's too much black. Aji to cleanly make this cut. I'm also winning by a lot, so I should definitely just play defensively. Yeah. Uh, my thought is, oh, well, you know, he'll connect. Um, he has to connect, and then I can come back here and defend. Or even just cut this stone off. I wasn't even thinking about that. He ended up connecting there because he didn't want this stone cut off. Uh, and I think there's a lot of sense to that. And, and, and now there's a... Well, no, there's not a, really a threat on this stone, actually, because he would just connect. But um, this would take this stone and completely invalidate this move. So he doesn't want to invalidate his own move. So, of course, he's going to come down. And that leads to a big fight. I don't know if Black read all this out, but it just barely works out okay for him. Um, but in reality, because of all the Black Agi, it does work out okay for him. And I'm already winning by a good amount. So just solidly connecting here. It's fine. Like, if he tries to poke down, I'm fine. He can try to do this. I'm fine. He, like, this stone is still dead. This stone is still dead. This stone is still dead. He's going to live with this, but that's fine. I don't need to be greedy. And he lived with it anyways. Um, so, yeah. And then I cut him off. And, I mean, of course, this is another point where I could have just blocked. But if I was going to block, I shouldn't have cut in the first place. Yep. Making moves. Comes through, it all just barely works out for him. The lucky jerk. That's a mistake, because that, that cut doesn't work. I can cut him off. Uh, this is maybe a minor mistake. It's debatable, because what ends up happening later on is that I come in here, and he puts me in a position where here he can connect in tempo, because I have to connect back. So there's maybe an argument that this is better, but I think it's debatable because that means I'm not putting as much pressure on these black stones and it might just be easier for him to do stuff anyways. So I think there's an argument for both of these moves. It's just the move I made he ended up taking good advantage of, so. Came in here, big mistake, that's a nasty cut. Yeah, I don't think black realized how big this cut was. And then the last real point I want to talk about is the clamp I did that works and that I failed to realize, like, worked. Because um, I do the clamp. I was proud of myself for this clamp. And then I'm like, oh, no. I can't, like, you know, what do I... I was, it's because I was looking at this cut. As I was watching my game back, I was focusing on this potential cut. But, um, and I was like, oh, if I get cut off, I'm dead. But I still don't need to give up this stone. By coming here, I'm giving up this stone. The clamp worked. I don't need to give up that stone. Yeah, I can come down here. And now Black can cut me off if he wants to, and I'll connect, and Black can Atari, and I'll connect. But this, these have two liberties, and this has three. Now Black can maybe, like, force me to um, uh, play the liberties so I don't die. And that's probably true. But um, even still, even if this is Gote, um, Black still has to come back and defend this at some point. And now this group, is, it's cut off. Like, it doesn't have an eye here. This is a false eye. And so... Can it make an eye? Can, is there a second eye down here? This is maybe not. Like, he lived really small, so this might have just killed his whole group. He has to maybe make a move to defend against the monkey jump, right? But then, like, does he want these stones cut off? Maybe he can make an eye there if he lets me take these stones. Um, I haven't read all this out, but if he connects, is there still an eye here? I can take this eye away. Um, and, like, it just becomes awkward. Uh, there's no eye there. Is that alive? It might be alive. Ah, nah, nah. Point is, he'd be living smaller, even if he lives. And he might not even live. Even if he defends against the monkey jump, he has to do it. Um, I, I, it's like, even if he gets an extra move to defend against the monkey jump, I think it's probably still worth it to keep that clamp move in. That would be the idea behind not keeping the clamp move, giving it up, is that the monkey jump is more valuable. But I don't think that's true. 
anyways, I think that's uh, the last point I really wanted to talk about. Um, is there any other points in the game that I commented on? No, I think we're... Wait, hold on. Mistake, there's more than enough room for eyes. Oh, he pulled back here when he didn't need to. He could have just defended here. The, this cut doesn't really do anything. Like, there's nothing there. And if he doesn't, if I don't cut, if I just come down here, uh, he can come here. And if he tries to, like, cut now, it doesn't matter. He's already got his eye. So there's no reason to pull back here. That was just a mistake. Oh, mistake. J14 is bigger. Ah, uh, yeah, when I took the co, I was thinking about Chinese rules because this would have been worth, like, because black gets this point and this point. That's two points. If I take this, I get this point and this point. That's two points. So this is a four-point swing in Chinese. But in Japanese, you get the point for the capture, but you have to fill this in, and you don't get a point for that. So it's, like, it's one point. Uh. And so, uh, yeah, it is not as, it's not very good. Uh, it would have been bigger to connect here. Because then black, I'm never forced to play this move or this move. Because when black plays um, here, I have to... Wait, what does he do? He doesn't do that yet. Hold on. Oh, he does that. Right. Um, and I took the co, whatever. Yeah, when he plays there, and this actually sets it up too. I'm forced to play here, and then he can play here, and then I have to play here. And that loses me more points than if I had just not taken that co. So... Yeah, and that's the end of the game. So, um, yeah, I think that review is... I, I wasn't paying attention to exactly how long it was, but uh, I think it was a lengthy one again because my opponent made a lot of mistakes, but I certainly made mistakes too. There's groups I could have killed that I did not kill, and then in the mid-game, I should have just secured my territory because I was winning. So, see you in the next game.